I don't get it. Real quick guys, before this video actually begins, I just wanna let you guys know that this is kind of a different video format than what we usually have. What I really wanted to do was gather all the boys together and talk about Toyota Jamboree and uh, the Sequoias. So this is quite a long video. I am not sorry about it. It was a lot of fun. And I guess it's kind of like a podcast format, but not really. I don't know. Just let us know if you guys like it. Write something down below. And that's all I got for you guys. Enjoy this video. And just like that, Skippy's probably going... Welcome to the YouTube channel. Today is a very interesting episode. I have the whole crew right here in front of me and we wanted to kind of recap our Toyota Jamboree experience. And with me at the far end of the table is Alex, my brother, who is also the co-owner of Canem. We have Jayla, who doesn't know what to do with his hands. Also knows Jonathan Lopez. We have Anlai, he's cool. And Joey. Well, who are you? And we have Pablo here too. <laughs> the man with the mustache. Now, now Anli has, has been seen in a couple of my videos, but a lot of people don't know who you are. So if you want to go ahead and kind of let people know who you are and what is your involvement with Tandem. Well, I mean, I guess I've known, God, I've known you screwballs now for what? Almost, almost 15, no? More yeah, than at least 15 that. years. Oh, 20 years now. 20 years, 20 years. Oh God, we're old. Yeah. So, yeah, I've known these guys for 20 years, about, uh, what, four years ago, five years ago, something like that. Uh, I kind of jumped in since I knew you guys. Uh, we, we decided to kind of pull in together and, and help you guys get some stuff started, and, uh, and thus the wheels were born. Right? And uh, I guess from that point on, we've just uh, been having a grand old time since then, and I, I break things and you fix them. <laughs> that, that, that's pretty, pretty accurate. Uh, Jonathan Lopez is a really good friend of ours. Uh, he's also the owner of this beautiful Sequoia in the back. And last but not least, we have Joey, who is also our uh, service advisor, our parts gopher, and our scheduler. Basically, he wears 10 million hats in the shop, making sure that we stay busy. At Jambo, he's the guy that we told to go up stuff that didn't want to go up things necessarily. <laughs> that, that is true, that is true. So, but no uh, one died. No, no, hashtag nobody died. No, we just buried them out back. It's fine. <laughs> so, so, Toyota Jamboree. If you don't know what Toyota Jamboree is, uh, there, uh, it's, it's basically one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Toyota event of the year. I think it's the biggest now, isn't it? I mean, at least as, as far as registrants go. Registrants, yeah. Uh, how many rigs did, were, were there out there? 800. 800 rigs. So that that is a lot of a lot of Toyotas. Uh, now it is it is located in Gilmer, Texas, at the OHB Park over there. Uh, it happens once a year. It's basically four days of off-roading, camping, drinking, and having a lot of fun. So. Well. So what happened up to Jambo? Yeah. So there was a, some big builds that we had to do. Yes. So naturally, naturally, <laughs> <laughs> you had to know that was gonna happen. So, <laughs> well, it's, it's because our neighbors yeah. working on a Nissan. So well, all, all we do is work on on vehicles here, right? Yeah. I mean, so. we we put him in the other room because he's working on a Nissan. Yeah. <laughs> keep him in the corner. We, we don't we don't let him in here. But, as uh, as every year. Uh, lead, the months leading up to to uh, Toyota Jamboree, it gets insanely hectic. I mean, we're we're pushing crazy hours. Uh, we're either trying to come up with new ideas or something to help promote the business out there. Uh, and this year, Alex uh, decided that Sequoias were the thing, and uh, we built three Sequoias prior to Toyota Jamboree. Decided Sequoias were the thing. Two months out from Jamboree. <laughs> two, two months out. So I, no, 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 because the locker took like a year to make. Yeah. So, took, yeah, his defense, it wasn't two months before Jambo. 
It was just but, two months before and, we actually and, decided to get started. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they cram up to Jambo. So we, we bought my Sequoia like two months before Jambo. And you bought yours like three months before Jambo? Yeah, probably three. So when I told JLo that Tandem was going to make basic, we were gonna support the Sequoias and we were getting ready to like make the aftermarket go big, he decided to get one and then I got one and then we built them before Jambo. So he was pulling crazy hours. I was pulling crazy hours. We did suspension, sliders. We built three bumpers that we prototyped. Uh, AL Off-Road built their, their uh, roof rack. Uh, we got the Auburns in, three rigs. Um, am I missing anything? Life Force lights. We got the ended up, uh, well, I mean, thanks to Fury, we actually got to outfit all our stuff with tires too. Yep. And then Alex, in his infinite wisdom, the day before Jambo decided to try to fit 37s on his truck. Woo! Yeah. Thank we you. just got a chainsaw out, it's fine. Yeah. No, actually, we didn't have the chainsaw. Well, I mean, there's just a little bit of rubbing. We had it's the chainsaw okay. things because of Alex. Well, that's just comes <laughs> naturally. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's, that's, Let's let's talk a little bit about the uh, the lockers. Uh, what what uh, one of the things about the the Sequoias is that they don't come with a factory e locker out of the box. So Alex went and got Auburn to commission a e locker system for the Sequoia clamshell rear end. So you want to talk about that a little bit or? Yeah. Um, so I had a customer. His name is Micah Stone. And he had a Sequoia, and he's he's had it for about three or four years. And he'd come into the shop and be like, hey man, we gotta build this thing. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't think anybody wants to build those. He'd be like, no man, it's pretty cool. And I'd be like, I just shrug him off. But he just kept on coming by and coming by and coming by. And finally I looked into it, and the Sequoias are pretty legit. Uh, the rear end on the Sequoia is a 10 inch rear end. So it's IRS, but it's a 10 inch rear end, which means that the second, it's gotta be the second biggest ring and pinion available in Toyota in North America because the first biggest is the, uh, the Tundra at 10.5 and the set and the third biggest is going to be the Land Cruiser at nine and a half. So the Sequoia gets a 10 inch ring and pinion in the back. It gets the same front differential as the 200 series and the Tundra and it gets the same front suspension as the Tundra. So you've already got the makings of a great SUV. The inside is as large as a minivan. Uh, you a got large minivan. a large minivan <laughs> and a luxurious minivan. A luxurious at least in this minivan. case, right here, yeah, I mean, you yeah. get a platinum. I mean, you can roll in a Honda Odyssey. Or you can take a Sequoia. I I take the Sequoia. So what Alex means to say is, we saw enough videos of the Toyota Siennas on off road wheels, <laughs> and we were like, hey, at least let's use this. Let's, let's let's use the Sequoia, right? It starts with the same letter. Why not? So, yeah. so yeah, that so it's leading up to Jambo. Sorry to kind of put us a little bit back on track. Well, leading back to Jambo, Alex bought his Sequoia. Uh, because at, at that point we're like, man, is he gonna have a truck in time? Is he like, and then it, when, when he found one and he went and bought it, then it's like, is he gonna have the lift kit in time? And then it went from, I mean. Oh, by the way, thank you, Crave Automotive in Canada for hooking us up with the lift in time. That helped us out a ton. Yeah, so massive thanks to you guys. Uh, and what, what, other, what other problems did, did we actually run into building this Sequoia? Because like putting the 37s in it actually wasn't that hard. No, I mean they actually fit in the back pretty well. You'll never hear me say that again, Alex. And, <laughs> and then in the front, I mean, I think there was some minor trimming, right? Well, I don't. I, I think it's just like a normal body mount chop, and then doing. And if you don't know what a body mount chop is, there's a there's a, a mount on the frame where the actual body of the truck where it bolts onto the frame. There's a mount right there, kind of in the wheel well, that's very inconvenient. And when you're wanting to put bigger tires on it, you have to kind of cut a section of it off to give you enough clearance. So when you turn the wheel full lock, the, the tire doesn't hit the actual body. I mean, uh, in terms of problems, I mean, Jonathan and I built the same rig. Did you run into anything that was crazy? No, the, honestly, it was pretty straightforward. I mean, it was a, a big lift, big heavy stuff, but other than the body mount chop um, and I wasn't too concerned about trimming the front bumper because we were putting the prototype bumpers on. Um, but really, it was just big, just big stuff. But no, it was fairly straightforward. I didn't really run into problems. I mean, yeah, like, you know, 
kind of lent itself towards it, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, Micah did the, the research on the skid plates. So, like, we used RCI skid plates uh, for Tundra. So, we basically just went ahead and bought the same stuff you'd buy for, like, a second generation Tundra, second and third generation Tundra, I guess, if you could say third generation. And we basically got the 26 gallon tank uh, skid, which came with the strap that has the bolt uh, on it. And you just install that and boom, like everything bolted on. To, well, for the skid plates, we did have to modify them for the transfer case. Oh yeah, that's right. A just small just a little really notch, easy. yeah, yeah. Really but easy. I mean, dude, it took us like maybe five minutes to yeah, notch it out. And then everything bolted on like butter. Like, like butter. butter. That's like butter. butter. That's and we used it. Brain, we yeah. definitely used it. And we used the skin plates, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They were used all right. <laughs> so, I mean, we, I, I guess every single year we, we go to Jambo and say, "Hey guys, we're 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 gonna we're not gonna break anything, right?" Is that usually the general consensus? We try to say that. No, yeah. well, we had we had you and I had an argument out of the booth once we finally got there. We'll get we'll get a little more into that later, but about who like you were gonna. You didn't, you, whoever broke, we needed Alex to not break, so, so we had somebody to tow us. So, exactly, see, see, this was kind of the ordeal <laughs> here, right? So, first day of Jambo, right out of the gate. Oh, first day that Alex and them get there, because they were working on the Sequoias all night. They get there that day, and Alex has been rolling around, and he hasn't even bought the day or done it. He goes, I'm like, hey, dude, I want to take a ride to Sequoia. All right! So we jump in. Alex then proceeds to, uh, well, rock around every single rock, bump, trail, and then he goes, he sees these like really high moguls and he goes, I think I could do that. Which at that point, he, <laughs> he, he did it. I mean, like I said, we used our skins. Yeah, yeah. And I probably hit my head at least six times on the corner of the and a couple times on the roof and I'm sitting there looking in the rear view mirror as that back tire is just in the wheel well, out of the wheel well, <laughs> out of the wheel well. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Alex, I think you're rubbing. And he goes, ah, it'll clear itself. So Woo! just like that, the Sequoia has cleared 37 inch tires. <laughs> With enough uh, wheel power, yeah. you can clear 37, no problem. No problem. The one thing I like to say a lot is Alex lacks a lot of uh, mechanical empathy. That's which not is true. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I coined, I taught you that term. I taught you that term. And yes, and he added the words lack of Hey, I wheeled, but that's, I wheeled, that's how I wheeled a GX on, I wheeled a GX on an 8-inch and I never broke it. That's, that's how we know. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's On 33. On little tires. Yeah, on little tires. <laughs> but I never broke it. <laughs> you never broke it. Fair enough. Just never well, you never it broke the diff. J just remember, guys, the, the <laughs> GX was ultimately, is now ultimately in, in JLo's hands here. And, oh, that's uh, great. Oh yeah, but but it was missing a few items when it got yeah. to him. And it's I missing think. more now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is to be trusted. It is to. It is. To be so trusted. so I do have mechanical empathy. No, no. no. <laughs> Who has? <laughs> how bent are those spindles? Not that bad. I did an alignment. Not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> not that. They're definitely You're green. You're fired. They're, <laughs> definitely, they're definitely green. And you had I one job. Yeah. Yeah. You had one job, yeah. dude. <laughs> Yeah, for our rigs, we don't want green caster. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but that's that's why Alex becomes such a good product tester and is it's such a great idea, man, because he if, will if it survives it him, we know we have a fantastic product. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I mean, like, I, I'll tell you, like, I think when I got my Forerunner back at 17, I, I put just, I mean, now it's not, it's a, it's a, it's way different than it was back then. <laughs> way different, we, we've done a lot of things to it. But prior to that, when it was just a mid-travel lift and everything like that, Alex was like, yeah, let's go wheel this thing. And uh, yeah, I ended up about 25, 30 degrees off camber with no rocks underneath the left side of my truck and with the side it was leaning off. And then his words to me were, you'll be fine. Yeah, that, that is and you were, you were fine. <laughs> After a toe strap and a winch. Nah. Fine is fine. Fine is so, fine. <laughs> but, but I mean, like, going back to it, I mean, like, yeah, we, we build up to Toyota Jamboree every single year, right? And then when we build up, that's like the culmination of, of, of everything we kind of put together, all our new products, all the new stuff that we have. And we, we wheel regularly, and we're probably a little different than most other shops in that regard in the sense that I think we always go out and try to break something. Yeah. I mean, but at the very least, test the limits, right? Oh, well, yeah, you have to. I mean, except for the except for the JDM Land Cruiser, because that's really hard to replace some parts on, guys. 
Hey, no. <laughs> no, it's it's as long as the engine runs, it's fine. Everything else, I can get, I can get in the states. Yeah, you should have seen his face before the rock army. But anyways, that's beside the point. <laughs> you don't sign me up. Like I, I was like, no, I don't want to. And then I hear my name being called. Like, go pull, pull the. the in, in all fairness, be surprised. It happens every year. Every year, I, I'm, t- I, I, I'm not doing the raw guard. Uh, you're on the roster. Damn it. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you don't send Alex and I to go sign people up and not expect us to sign everybody else that's in the crew, right? Which I appreciate y'all not signing me up. <laughs> this year. This, this year? year. This year. We, we know you don't have skids yet, so once once we get the skids on there, then... All right. Not put the skids on. <laughs> Let me... You can not put skids on. You can, just run the, you can just run the garden with no skids. It's up to you. Hey, I did it in the Tacoma. Well, okay, yeah. But, okay, so real quick, um, I wanted to talk, uh, I want J-Lo to talk to us about his transition from the Forerunner to the Sequoia, because before this, how many Forerunners did you have? I had three fifth gen T80 Pros. <laughs> and why, why did you, like, what about the Sequoia was appealing? <laughs> what about the Sequoia was appealing that made you want to go to the to Sequoia? Um... <laughs> Well, I want to know what that's about first. <laughs> yeah, what's the sticker you So, so, just for everybody who's watching, right? We had, had a discussion about how we wanted to talk about what happened to Jambo, but we were at all discussed, you know, like, <laughs> hey, let's just have a sit down and talk. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Alex is always like, well, I'm just going to jot some things down. It'll be natural. It'll be natural. So, please tell us about your. Sequoia. <laughs> well, well, okay. I mean, no, to, to, to be fair, to be fair, to, to be fair, to be fair, Alex is a very, very organized person at times, and at times, <laughs> at times, it's but, a necessary part of every business. I mean, he's the reason we're he, still in business. Let's be honest. And it's it's the only reason why we're still in business <laughs> yeah. is because he keeps us together. But I I do think we want to talk about the transition as to why you went from the foreign to the Sequoia. But I think we can do that here in a little bit because I wanted it. Talk about the uh, the raw gardens because we were on the subject of the raw gardens and uh, I guess prior, prior to that, let's just kind of tell them what we did in terms of the trip, right? I mean, I think the first day you guys went there, we went down Clyde's and they decided to do spiders when it was all rutted out and muddied up. Well, that was that was the day of like the raw garden event. No, no, that was the that was the that second was not, time we did. Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, they did it without us. They did See, it without us. So the like, first time, I, I was out teaching people how to wheel. Yeah, well, we were there trying to blow up Sterling Strug. Well, y'all succeeded. You gotta break one. It's tradition. It's tradition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got to. Look, Sterling. Sterling started last year. He went home on a tow rig. This year, he went home on a tow rig. <laughs> Mission accomplished, right, guys? I mean, different reasons, but you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. But in all seriousness, guys, like we took everybody who went to Jambo knows Jambo traditionally is a wet event. It, it is. It's it's well it used to be in the winter. Like they would have then it was to wet and cold. It was wet and cold and so then they switched it to they switched it to uh, May, right? Or in- oh, I mean it's and it, it's always the weekend before Mother's Day, right? Because you go break things and then you go beg for forgiveness by giving your wife uh, and the mother of your child <laughs> some really nice gift going, Can I get a new diff and some axles and some other things, please? <laughs> So, but yeah, I mean, it, it was real wet. So, I mean, as usual, Jambo being as wet as it is, the trails get pretty, pretty ripped up after the day one. Because I think it's, it's a lot of clay out there. It's not, it's not like, is it, no, it's, or is it it's Bridgeport? That, that's it's clay. It, 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 well, it's there's, clay, there's, right? it's yeah. a lot of that red dirt, that, that, that clay stuff in it. When it gets wet, it gets slick. It's, it, and it, it, it literally compacts in your treads, uh, and it makes it really hard to get traction. Unless you're running the Furies. And then your truck is yeah. uh, perpetually red for the yep. remainder of the Well, the undercarriage is forever red. You, yep. you, you, don't, you, don't get that, you don't get that red dirt out of there. But yeah, I mean, we, we took that the first day, and we were honestly thinking. I had actually told Alex, I was like, um, and we've dubbed these the trail whales, right? But I was like, you're not going to fit <laughs> without <laughs> making an innuendo here. Alex made it fit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, yeah, because the mirrors are power folding, so you just press a button and they go bloop, and then you fit. Well, that was, 
Well, that was right? That's, I, I use those power mirrors. I use the power mirrors all the freaking time. I, I, I actually, I have some footage of, of you going in with the power mirrors folded, and then J Lo is coming through with his folded out bearing through the trail. But there's there's a, yeah there's a section of Spiders Ravine if you haven't seen it uh, where it's a very tight. You're you're in a little ravine. It's a very tight turn. Uh, and the sequoias, I, I was like, there's no way. But they, they actually have like a really good turning radius. Yeah, it's uh, four inches bigger than the Forerunner, and I think it's like actually two or four inches smaller than a 200 series Land Cruiser. So when people are like, there's no way you're gonna make it through the trails, like, you, you can. We haven't run into a trail yet, at least I haven't, I don't know about you, but I haven't run into a trail yet where I felt like the size was prohibitive. Uh, definitely visibility is not as good as like a Forerunner or a GX. Uh, I definitely felt like I couldn't see crap. But that being said, uh, I was able to fit it into all the trails, no problem. And Spider's Ravine was the tightest one that we did. Maybe Politician might be worse. Because Politician has that tree that's like hanging at... Oh yeah, you have a vertical And then, and then you, you go up to it and then you it kind of pushes you into it. So maybe you might hit the roof rack or whatever, but other than that, like, I had no problem following the Forerunners and the GXs. Well, what helped a whole lot was that, even though it was really wet, right, <laughs> we were we were kind of surprised, because I think at one point Alex tried to do a, uh, a, a one donut, and uh, doing a donut, he couldn't do a donut. He, un he took off track control and everything like that. And Turned just, on the locker. And he, he floored it, and he just kept driving in a circle like he would normally drive in a circle on concrete, right? I mean, he couldn't even get the slip. But, uh, you know, one of the things that, that we liked a lot was that getting up that trail, aside from the fact, I mean, you had to give it some, some you had to give it some butt to go, right? I, I did, but I didn't have to give it as much as I did. I just did it for fun. <laughs> so the first day we went up there, everybody that made it up there, and then we're all like, ooh, let's see what the Sequoia can do. And all of a sudden, we just hear, <laughs> and there you know, Alex is up. And uh, he took the hard line too, where his left tires sank into a gigantic gulch, and uh, he used the skids, he didn't care. And uh, went, went right up. So but, uh, you know. Yeah, no, but that, I mean, having, having the benefit of a big freaking V8, I mean, I mean, you can make up almost any trail if you've got enough momentum. If you, but if you have enough momentum, the problem is, is the way that trail was steep, keeping the momentum was difficult. When you're a, when you're a fat girl going uphill, like sometimes it's, it, you gotta, you gotta give it the good old hoof. But you know, you know what did help on the Sequoias? Like, the IRS hurts you whenever you're flexing, but going up that trail, yeah. there were some big rocks that were hanging out in the middle. And the Sequoia has like an extra four inches or five inches of clearance over, you know, like a GX or a foreigner because there's no div hanging down. You know? Yeah, I will say that. I clipped, I think virtually everybody who had a solid rear axle clipped that center rock going up. Joey included. Joey, but, how is this still alive? Joey, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, got a few times. But the Sequoia is cleared no problem because they have their div tucked up. And if, for those that don't know, IRS is not where you pay your taxes, but it is independent rear suspension. So. Supposedly pay your taxes. Yeah, supposedly. supposedly. <laughs> I'm gonna act like I don't hear any of this. <laughs> also, he's our lawyer. That's awkward. Way to go. Way to go, Joey. Way so that's go. why you didn't hear this. <laughs> well, I mean, but I think let's let's, let's the, the the thing I liked about this jambo was is it was wet, right, guys? But it dried out and then got rain and, and then dried out and. Got, so I mean, you had the chance to do the technical trails as long as you hit them at the right times. And then when it got wet, I mean, let's be honest, guys, everybody likes to romp around. What better to do it than 5.7 liter V8? Yeah. Yeah, not, not a 4.2 diesel. Well, I mean, that, I mean, you, you went at the wrong time, what can I say? It sounded cool, though. Yeah, yeah, you hear the whistle and... and it's then, got a ton of torque. And then all of a sudden you hear you hear him, he's like, I can't make it over this hill until oh, I give I mean, it to I mean, <laughs> 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 you, you put, you turn on all the lockers, you put it in low with that, that I switched it to a three to one low range, and that thing, that thing is a monster. Like, it's literally a monster. But we don't have to turn on all the lockers. Yeah, for the rest of us, just kind of get the gas and go. Just kind of walk right up. She's old. She's, 
But I mean, I, I think all of us in here, uh, are you, what were you running? Fury RTs, right? Yeah, the Fury RTs. So he's got 33 Fury RTs. I was running the 35 Fury RTs. That was, yeah, I used to run 35. Then I went to the 35 MT2s, uh, Furies. And then you were running 37 RTs. 37 RTs. And then Alex, of course, was like, I'm gonna run 37 MT2s Dude, from Fury. Been, it, it, like, no joke, I'm impressed at how quiet those are. So yeah, so that was one of the things, guys. Like. I, I gotta tell you guys, I I, I had the, the older Fury MTs, and, wow. and Pablo still has the Fury MTs. What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, going down the highway, guys, on those Fury MTs, even from day one, I mean, they were loud. I mean, we've, we've, we've ridden virtually every single tire. I think t uh, Pablo's old tires are 37 Cooper STT Pros. Yeah, right? yeah, they are. And I mean, there's nothing bad to say about STT Pros. I mean, they do their job. They're intended to be an off-road you know, the tire, I mean, it's a much rain tire. But I drove two Jambo, had totally forgot that I had MTs on. Like, no idea whatsoever. Yeah, I was actually really, I, I regretted not going with the MT2s, because I, I was still under the impression of like, much rain, loud, bumpy, I don't want to deal with it. Like, I deal with it enough in my Tacoma. I, I didn't want anything to do with that. Uh, and. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, like the the two days before we went to Jambo, I, I put my MT2s on two days beforehand, and I came back and I, I, we did a runout test on all the tires, and then we came back and we were like, holy crap, this thing has like almost no runout whatsoever on this tire. No. And, and then we, we also went out and then and then of course it, I mean standard MTs take somewhere between about you know what I, I think eight to twelve ounces to balance in most cases. I think in some, most of mine, I was balancing in four to six ounces on, on, on the tires. So that's actually pretty impressive. So I mean, but then we took them off road, and we we're like, you know, there's got to be some give and take, right? And then of course, Alex can't even do a donut because he's got traction. And then uh, I think virtually everything we tried to dig into, we went up. Oh, it was which, insane! It was insane watching the raw garden. Like you're watching sequoias on the raw garden. How much those tires ripped. And then I, I saw. I mean, his. We were there where we had to uh, reset the beat on this tire. Yeah, that did happen. <laughs> you, you want, well, so you popped the beat off your tire? I did. So, actually, you popped a beat off of two tires. <laughs> <laughs> and on I, the same side. On this, and I popped the same beat off the same wheel twice. Impressive. All in three seconds. Yeah, all in three seconds. And the best part, was his wife was in the passenger seat holding the baby. Yeah, holding my baby. <laughs> Baby's first ride. And Baby's first it. ride. Yeah. Jet. <laughs> Jet. We, we are a safety organization of sorts. Yeah. <laughs> he was strapped in. Everybody was safe. Oh, wow. Okay. Everybody was yeah. safe. So, yeah, we were, we were there. Uh, it started to, to violently rain uh, before, the, before, we, uh, before we could exit that trail. We took a wrong turn somewhere, right? Yeah, we definitely got lost. And then all of a sudden we had decided, oh, look, there's Skyview. Yeah. Sierra Skyview. So anybody who isn't familiar with Sierra Skyview, it's got some gnarly shelves. Um, and we don't care. So. <laughs> like bigger than these table shelves. Yeah. So as we, as we decided to do that, uh, I, I sat there and I go, you go first. So, <laughs> make the new guy go first. Well, I mean, I also offered to go first. Yeah, <laughs> e evidently he <laughs> don't give up. So, anyway, uh, we're sitting here watching, and the only line we could find that the Sequoia would, should be able to make, I mean, even with 37s and all that stuff. Well, hold on, let's back up a little bit. We were somewhere we shouldn't have been. Right, we were. <laughs> That's usually how most good stories start. <laughs> this had no no good reason to be where we were trying to go with it. But we were trying to test out everything we had done, right? Okay, now continue. So, it, I mean, oh, we, wait, we, wait, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me let me add a little bit more to the story. Let's see. There was a caged uh, Land Cruiser, like a. Yeah. We followed him up. There was there was some other caged Toyota thing, and uh, we're like, it's not going to be a problem. We walked it. You and I both walked it. And said, hey, this is what we'll do. Don't mind this. Don't mind this. Don't mind this. Don't mind these. All right, now go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> wait, so, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. <laughs> All right. So when we decided to go up that, that slot over there, 
we had learned as the sequoias turn, because they're so wide, there's no physical way that his back right tire could have made it up the shelf. So as Pablo once said, we just have to give it the old skinny. Yeah. And uh, with 5.7 liters of pure skinny power, he sent it. Uh, he sent it. And uh, as he sent it, um, we freaked out. But thanks to the locker and, 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 and thanks to the uh, 5.7 liter, and uh, they were just pulling. That's, that's the best way to pull it. They would just start pulling. And he launched the right side of his truck up a rock. Like his back tire and his front tire caught at the same time. And his whole entire truck comes up on two wheels. But rather than doing what most people would do, which is punch the brake and freak out, our seasoned newbie here. Yeah. <laughs> but he's not a newbie. Just, yeah, I mean, not, not to driving by any means, but to climb that one, yeah, okay, yeah. No, no, he's been wheeling for a while. Oh, okay, all right. No, no. Well, he, I think he went to brown pants that day, but uh, he, he came back down, his front bead, you hear it pop the first time. He blows the bead the first time. Then he pops up again, and on the second time down, his front bead completely blows. And then his rear bead blows. And so here he is, but he don't give a crap because he knows if he lets go, guess what? Oh, He's going trouble. down the trail sideways. Trouble. So he continues flooring it up this trail until he gets it all the way to the top and then gets to the safe spot. Which at that point in time, I was really impressed. I had fully expect those Furies to be like torn to shreds because he had no air in that front right one at all. Like, he, it just kept digging and it kept going. And then, so it ended up, we got a high lift and we were gonna take the tire off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but then, you know, a bunch of lazy people don't yeah. wanna take tires off. So we got the front end of the Sequoia up and there's a video of it somewhere where, <laughs> and I think I got voted because, because JLo here has this yeah. facial Flammable. masculine look and here, Apparently, I've been called a porpoise a few times. <laughs> well, so, genetically, he's incapable of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I just like. I, it is what it is. But in any event, we figured with combustion of sorts and open air, we might want to get the hairier people away. <laughs> so I got stuck in the job. And uh, I'd done it before, popped the tire stem out, and uh, popped that tire right back on and drove right back in, didn't we? we did. And then uh, we proceeded to do more stupid things. Yeah, we did. But that's, that's, that's a, you know. There's a video of that somewhere. Maybe we can edit. Yeah, and then, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, so, well, if we know who has it, they can send it. I think Omar has a good one. But, uh, so yeah, he had blown both beads, and the tires and everything that he had still made it up the hill, and we were able to get it back on bead and drive it back. Zero issues. And he drove the same tire. We didn't even swap the spare. Yeah. He drove the same tire all the way home. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we wheeled it after that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it was super impressive because that right front tire was like folded inside the wheel, oh. and the outer lip of the wheel was like driving on the <laughs> sidewall of the tire. <laughs> like it was all just smashed up underneath there. And we're looking at it, thinking, surely it's cut, damaged something. Oh so, yeah, yeah. He was totally pigeon toe driving like this, flop flop. Yeah, it was flop flop. Pretty bad. <laughs> so, but it wasn't. <laughs> Still covered under warranty. I'm just <laughs> But yeah, I mean, <laughs> running the RTs, uh, I ran the RTs for the longest time. So when we're in dry conditions, I'll say the RTs, I'll take them hands down any yeah. time of the day. They just, I mean, they grip. You've got so much more, more surface area hitting the ground and pulling you up. And then when you, when you air down, the RTs just, they, they just don't slip. Like yeah. we don't find them. So, I mean, if, if you guys are ever worried, you know, that they're durable as can be. I assure you, because Alex has been on <laughs> and I, then I, I don't know. Uh, Jonathan's starting to take over Alex's title from what I'm hearing. Right? Yeah. I just need to go wheel with Jonathan because I think we're gonna get along. <laughs> I think we're gonna get along real good, yeah, buddy. And, and then I mean, we swapped the MTs, and then like I think we were with a whole crew of people when Alex made it up the first time, right? We had guys who couldn't make it up spiders. We had to we had to toe strap them out, or we had to winch them. Out. And, but everybody that had those MT2s, it just, it dug in and ate its way up. It's just it's insane. And it looked like somebody had freshly plowed the field down there. It, that's what it looked like. It just tore everything up. But we, we made it up a hill and nobody else made it up after us, probably because we plowed the field. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I gotta tell you, I got nothing to do. And then we drove back and zero balance issues, zero issues, just getting back. I mean, the tires, I, I gotta say, I've, I've had 
I've had quite a few set of tires, and you know this. Yeah. And uh, they don't, the tires don't hold up like that normally. <laughs> How much rest? Yeah, we, we, we had a, actually it was a Jambo, I think it was like three years ago, and I can't remember what trail we were leading out of, but it, it was, uh, I think it was like Linda Gale, like that, where you have like a bypass on the right side, but then there's like a difficult pass on the left side that it's like a little ravine, but it like sharpens up and gets closer. Oh yeah, the rock, the, the rock bath up to the back side, of, or front side. Yeah, like it dumps you over by the rock guard. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, but yeah, I remember, uh, his Dennis was going out with his FJ with the, he had, I can't remember what tires he had, but like it didn't look like he went too rough through it, but it punctured both tires on the right side. Oh, he had cam twos. He had cam twos. Yeah. It, it just ate up the sidewall super easy. So. Yeah, we, I think even with the MT1s, the MT1s, the issue wasn't durability, right? I mean, no. you and I ran those for a while. So the issue with the MT1s was, was not that they were dur durable, they were just loud. Yeah. yeah, it was just loud. Yeah. But I mean, I think we, we crawled the trail at Bridgeport one time, and everybody was just sitting there watching that rock can opener my bead, and somehow I just kept going up the hill. Well, we, we did we did an event uh, for a friend of ours that that uh, who, who suffered a very horrific accident. Mm. He was an electrician, and so we did a charity event that was organized by Alex uh, to to raise money for him. And one of the attractions that we had at this event is that we got two junkyard cars. <laughs> Go ahead. You don't want to talk about it? No, you can talk about it. Just, we just learned whenever you're going to crush cars, don't get convertibles. And take the battery out. <laughs> take the battery out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but no, the, uh, the, the Tacoma at the time. You got to the horn. The horn, yeah. The Tacoma at the time had the, uh, the the Fury MTs, and I was getting like I was in some sharp metal as I was getting on top of the of the convertible. The, it was a Toyota Solara, oh, yeah. and uh, and everybody for sure thought like I destroyed my tire. Oh but, well, you were going over the A pillar. What was left of it? What was left of it? Yeah, but it was that was they're, they're durable. I think we can safely say that they are for sure durable. Yeah, and, and like I said, I mean, I think this is a good place. Jambo was a good place to really just tear them. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, it was, a, it was a chance to basically test them all different sharp rocks, terrain, mud, you know, sand, all sorts of, well, not really sand, I guess it's beach sand kind of stuff, it's a little wet. But yeah, it was just a good way for us to run. I think by the time we finished up, the fact that all of us drove home on the tires we came on, it was, uh, well, it was, it was pretty impressive. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. And and Joey got to uh, push his limits a little bit because he is actually the newbie of yeah. off roading. And uh, there's that infamous clip in the the last uh, the last day of no, it's the, it the second episode of 2. the. 5, I think it was two point five. You can hear Alex just like the truck would have not made it up if Alex wasn't yelling go 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 yep. go go. Yeah. Uh, Every go adds an extra ten horsepower. Yes. What, what, what y'all didn't see was the four attempts Joey had to go through that. At least four. At least four. In uh, his defense, he was 33s and he didn't have the clearance to clear his diff. And, you know. No, but <laughs> but he, he, did, he, he did good. And it's always good to push, push your limits and, and uh, kind of refine that scale. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but uh, Alex looks like he's... You okay there, buddy? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, uh, I mean, I think this Jambo was probably one of our, our, our at least the smoothest Jambo. It's terrifying to say, right? Yeah. It was actually, because the even the, the crunch time before Jambo wasn't as bad as, like, previous years. I showed up on Wednesday, so I wasn't here for the crunch time the last one, last day. Well, usually we don't make it till like, Friday evening. Yeah, that's true. Like, the, I mean, that's usually the thing. But I think this year that we actually made it on Thursday morning, it was it was it was, it was a pretty smooth jam. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. We took a lot more time, I guess, this jambo to really just wheel. And I mean, I think the prior jambo was Alex knows. I mean, Alex being the, the responsible one always mans the booth, even though he's also the crazy one who 
who wants to send his stuff off the cliff. So, and then this year, I mean, I think you got to do some wheeling, but like a good deal wheeling. I, yeah, dude, it was, I had a blast, man. It was so much fun. Yeah, yeah I think that was the first jambo I've actually seen you have. The, like, the only other jambo I've seen you have fun with was, like, the first one we went. And we were, we were sponsored, but not really a sponsor. I can remember. I think we were silver. We were, we were I, I don't know, we had to give some, like, they, they, they wanted to give us, they wanted us to give, like, some safety recovery course. And I was like, we haven't wheeled enough to give a safety recovery course. <laughs> and it's like, well, what, what, what can y'all do? Like, we can no, give a recovery course. It's we, just we not going to be safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll do trail repair. And it's I remember having a, yeah, I was like, we'll do trail repair. And uh, we just ended up doing a, uh, a, uh, a course on, tra on trail repair. But how to change a CV axle. But, I mean, in all seriousness, though, I mean, when we guys wheel, I mean, I think every single time, with the one time we did up Sierra Skyview, I think that was the only time we ever felt like we were a little out of control. Uh, but I think every other time I've, I've ever wheeled with Alex or you guys like that, we're conservative in the manner we attack an obstacle, right? I mean, we find the best line, we take it slow, we take it steady, we go through the, the necessary components before we just say, hey, let's, let's floor it. Yeah. My truck's still in one piece. Why is it that I always hear, when I have a customer come in the shop and I see a broken taillight, and I ask them, <laughs> what, what is up with this broken taillight? And the response is always, well, I was falling on lead. Well, uh, evidently there is now a, uh, a winch pull line lead that says, and they made me do it. Yep. So, <laughs> is I mean, there really? Yeah, there's, there's now a winch pull line that says, and they made me do it. So I, 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 will, I, will, I will absorb that and say, OK, I didn't make you do it, but you made it up. It, you, you guys might have some cosmetic damage. You, you guys are the crazy ones. I'm, I'm too reserved. I, I, I like to take it a little easier than that. But This is coming from the guy at the first game that I went with you. That you see beat me and said, you're following me too close. And I was like, you worry about you. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, all I see is rear axle in the air. I was looking at you in my rear view mirror because you were too close. <laughs> Should have been looking at the, at the road. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I, I look at Pablo and I go, I go, are you okay? And all I hear through the CB in his crackly way is, I think I broke something. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're getting off topic here. Where, where are we at next, Alex? Let's talk about that armoring gear, man. That thing was impressive, Ooh. to say the least. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, well, that's kind of what I wanted to talk. I wanted J-Lo to, to talk about his experience with a foreigner and why he went with a Sequoia, you know? Yeah, because I think we covered enough on Jambo for now. So like, because I, I think the cool thing about the Sequoias is, I mean, the foreigner is a great platform, don't get me wrong, but... Choose your words wisely. <laughs> I, all I gotta do is bring a tire off for a Sequoia and bring a tire for a foreigner and like... Yeah, for sure. And dude, right, right then and there, dude, that's... But that's the whole truck. I'm fixing that. See, here's, here's the thing. Because he was, skept he was spectac uh, skeptical. Skeptical? Yes, that word. Spectacle. <laughs> he's <laughs> the <laughs> only <laughs> one that has not had, well, I guess the three that's of us not haven't, not. but he's one of the ones that has not Kombucha had. Kombucha has a little bit of alcohol. It has a little bit of alcohol in it. But it's like literally nothing. It's nothing. But it, 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 it's funny that you say that because out of, out of the whole Jamboree experience, or at, at even pre-Jambo experience, someone's got like a little PTSD from the Sequoias. Huh? Oh, yeah. 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 It's a, it's a, he, sees, whoa, whoa. he sees these things, he sees the 37s, and one, he's like, comes up to me, he's like, hey, what do I need to do to put 37s in? <laughs> in all fairness, I know what I need to do. It's just, am I willing to do so, okay? It's the next step. I mean, you think, I, you think my gear ratio is correct? Seeking a tow rig, three quarter ton or larger to tow four runner. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but back to Sequoias. Like the the reason we decided to, uh, you know, there was uh, some expense in getting Auburn to help us with developing the locker. But the cool thing about the Sequoias is like everything everybody wants out of the four runner, the Sequoias already got. It's like the V8 check, six speed. Check. Full time all wheel drive, part time all wheel drive, two wheel drive. Like you can, whatever you want to drive on, you can do it. You can do like four low locked, four high unlocked center diff. So you can do full time all wheel drive. Like you can do whatever you want. So if you put big tires on with a weird offset, 
you'll have torque steer like you do on the Land Cruisers. That's pretty cool. Uh, the interior is amazing, I think. I enjoy the interior. Like they have captain's chairs and basically having about two feet of leg room is awesome. Having that third row seat with a lot of room is awesome. The uh, rolling rear window, I really enjoy. What about you? What, what do you enjoy about this Koya? Um, so I guess we can go back to why I swapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right, so I was hesitant to swap because I travel a lot and we wheel all over the country and we go camping and we're always out wheeling on our own. And um, I was always on Alex about it. If you can get a locker and you can support these things, we'll do it. Well, obviously here it is. So Alex hit me up, like we said earlier. He said, we got lockers. I said, I'll go find one. And here it is. So the things I love about it and the reason I made the change was for the V8, the six speed and the room. I wanted more room, but I wasn't willing to do it until I knew that there was support for it. But now that, you know, Tandem has support for it, it's, I'm so happy with it. There's not a single thing I miss about my 4Runner. And in my opinion, I had a nice one. It was a green one, right? Everybody likes the army green. What are the blue? I oh, had a blue one also. <laughs> <laughs> he had three. He had three. Yeah, I had three TRD Pro 5th Gen 4Runners. Um, but I, I wouldn't trade this for any of them, or maybe even two of them. Um, it's so big, and that's what I wanted. I wanted a huge vehicle. Like, we spend weeks on the road camping sometimes, and say you had a bigger family than I do. I have a small family, but say you had a big family. You got three rows to fit whatever you need, whomever you need, or like we do, fold the rear row down, and you got more room in there than you could. Like, there's more room. There's room to spare. Yeah, you and guys, so, you didn't camp in the truck this time, right? You camped in under tent. We camped in the tent, right. So, I mean, yeah, the, the, that thing was pretty darn cool. We. I think I think all of us marveled at it the night that he got it set up. I think we were like, as it opened up, we all sat there and went, oh, Hallelujah! <laughs> shout out, shout out to Al Off Road. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when I told him, like, like J Lo, and I've basically been, you know, like selling the platform to all the aftermarket, uh, you know, supporters. So uh, when I told AL Offroad, hey, I'm committing to this, I've got the sliders, I've got the front bumper, I've got the locker, we've got the RCI uh, skid plates, AL Offroad uh, went ahead and we had the 3D scan for the Sequoia made up, thanks to John Uddleston, and they developed this thing in about a month and a half. Yeah. And with the AL Offroad roof rack, which is super strong, I, I love it. But I like the look of it, it's quiet. Uh, and the bars are thicker than any other ones I've seen. And the, the, the roof rack allowed him to get yeah. the eye camper on there. And you were telling me that the eye camper on the foreigner is like, it hangs out how much? Oh yeah, it would hang out probably two or three inches on either side. And I, I had no extra room up there. So now you know, I can fit recovery boards on the back or you know, whatever I need back there. But, um, but it actually looks okay. It doesn't look like a mushroom anymore. Princess Toad Silver. It's amazing. It fits the it fits Yeah, it looks right really up. Really, wow. And that, that tent has been on two fifth gens as well as the Sequoia now. It's been everywhere. But to go back to what you said about the, the rack, like the level of beef that Ale Off-Road built into these racks absolutely matches the level of beef of the Sequoia. Like it... On a lot of my other racks, they're always squeaky with the tents up there. Do no noise. You can jump up there, climb up there. It's it's really really impressive. Yeah, the, the, the I'll say this much. I, I run another aluminum roof rack. I went through a whole lot of looking up aluminum roof racks. Prior to that, I had that big fat Gobi on top. And the problem with that thing is, is it just it sounded like grunge wind noise all day long. I mean, it just it was awful with nothing on. And then. I switched uh, to SSO, and I still run their SSO rack, but I'm also not a camper. You guys know this. <laughs> <laughs> I do not go on vacation and say, huh, let me go, let me go lay in the rain. That's not me. But I, I don't mind wheeling. I don't mind doing that fun stuff. I don't mind camping if I have to. But if I can rent an RV, I do. <laughs> but that being said, I also, which is the reason why I have a lightweight rack for, for, what I, for my purposes, because I basically only store buddy crap up there, right? For, for something like that, I, I crawled into that tent the day he, he, he got it all set up and everything like that. I, I gotta say, most of the time I get on some other racks and stuff like that, I don't care how much they say they can support. But I feel like I'm gonna fall through. I mean, you guys, I mean, 
you guys know. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a big dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a big dude. And, and, and the problem is, is like, I, nobody wants to sleep on something they feel like they're going to end up on the floor anyway in the morning. So, <laughs> get it, watching the, the rack and watching how it's set up, and then, I mean, I mean this is big dude approved. <laughs> But it, it make it, it, is it any wind noise or anything? No, no, not at all, not at all. My some of the other racks I've had had like this super annoying buffeting, and like if you're oh, on that's a, the worst. Yeah, dude. if you're on like a Bluetooth call with somebody, they would constantly complain, constantly, con- just you know, call me back later, call me back later. And so it was one thing I actually tested because um, this is one of the prototype racks, as is that one up there, um, one of the first. Um, and Scott was real adamant about us testing them and giving a lot of feedback to him, and it's perfect. It's cool. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like the, it too. the bars are actually like slotted. So yeah, you can, you can move around. You can move around. Yeah. See that that's that's really that's cool. actually pretty cool because then you can you can outfit almost any roof rack on there. You can space yeah. them out. You can actually can you you can double up bars too yeah. in certain areas and still have the same yeah. and have double the support that you need. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty smart. Yeah. So I mean, that that thing was was pretty hefty. I, I gotta say, there was a demonstration. Scott's a big dude too, and uh, I, I seen him get I seen him get on top of some of his roof racks. Yep. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I, I was a little terrified watching that, but I mean, everything came out well, and that's where I got my confidence to not go through somebody's. Yeah, and it's like, you know, that's a 160 pound tent being thrown around, you know, six foot off the center line of the wheels here. You saw it. I had the right side up in the air. I had the rear axle up in the air. I had the front axle up in the air. It got bounced around. <laughs> it's solid. It's solid. <laughs> he made it fly like a butterfly. She can jump and land like a brick. <laughs> right? Come on now. It's, if my baby didn't wake up, my baby didn't wake up. I mean, okay. I, I can't say anything about that. <laughs> but uh, you know, but I, I did look at your wife. She looked on her face after you were done. She was like, even though her her mouth was saying. Oh, that was fine. Her face was saying, "This is my daily driver, and I'm going to kill him when I get home." But uh, no, I mean, like seriously, this is I, I would, I would do it with Mr. Koya. <laughs> What'd you say, Ali? Nothing. Nothing. What'd you say? I said you suck. <laughs> but yeah, we we look. Uh, our family looked at a Sequoia too, because I mean. Oh, I, I'm I'm getting one for Sarah. I mean, it, 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 I mean, it's not going to get minivan mileage, right? But it's no. also going to not do. It's also going to do way more than your minivan is going to do, right? Well, it's one I don't have to say I want a Honda. So. Well, and, and you know, <laughs> out of all out of all the Toyota uh, rigs that you can buy, the cool thing about the Sequoias is, I think you're basically like in 200 series territory without the 200 series price. So. I got it, mine is a 2015 with 100,000 miles. I got it for 26K. I don't know what you could buy. <laughs> like a 200 series? That's gotta be like a 40 grand 200 series. Oh, okay. at least. So, at least. so with, with price aside though, how would you say, obviously the 200 is probably gonna be better. In what terms? Because I don't think so. Yeah, what's better? So we looked at a 200 series Land Cruiser. Fake, fake. But I wanted big. That, I'll say this much. So I, I looked at I looked at a 570 because I mean we were looking at a family car, and, and I'll say this much: getting in the Sequoia and getting in the 570, the Sequoia was noticeably larger. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean it's. Yeah. The, I think the only thing that makes the the Sequoia is great. It's huge. I'm a Land Cruiser guy, so obviously I'm gonna be more biased towards a Land Cruiser. Well, that's we're signing up for more rocks. No, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. The Sequoia did do more than the, your Land Cruiser did at Jamba. Ooh. I'm not gonna say I, why. I'm I just wanna stay here. I'm gonna move. Okay. I I have not been able to. I was teaching Michael how to off road. No no no. Hold on. It's got a point. When we <laughs> took <laughs> when we took when we took Micah to Bridgeport and we took you to Ooh. Bridgeport oh. in the eighty series. Oh. Ooh. When, oh. <laughs> well, hold on. That my, wasn't that his first time wheel in the eighty series. That was my first time wheel in the eighty series. <laughs> It had 30s, and the timing solenoid on the transmission was not functioning properly, so I didn't have first gear and four low. But so I was had no nearly problem. underpowered. So what you're telling me is that the Sequoia kept up? Yes. 
But with a what a triple lock eighty series? Yeah, yeah. I I I that's good. That's a good idea. In Obama's defense, it was a handicapped yeah triple lock. It was a handicapped triple lock, not triple lock. Not triple lock. There's our handy. I guess. I guess <laughs> at the time, Michael wasn't even locked, was he? No, he was locked. He was oh, locked. That, that's right. That was locked. the day we were testing the lock. I, lock. I guess. I guess that just means we're gonna have to go to an off-road park and uh, play a little game of uh... challenge accepted. And we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna kill you now. <laughs> we'll, we'll play a game of horse. Right. I'll go. We'll play. But, yeah, yeah, I'm not playing the horse. <laughs> I'm gonna lose. No, like, but, I'll but, ride more uh, horses, but I'm but not. But back to the 200 <laughs> series versus yes. the Sequoia. Okay, all right. This back is, to the 200 series. Yeah. Like, like, okay, turning radius. I think it's like it's tighter on the Sequoia. Actually, go look it up on Google. Get on Google. Look up turning radius for a 2018 Land Cruiser. Whoa, 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 The, the <laughs> turning radius on a Sequoia is actually tighter. Yes. The 200 series had turn assist. I have not seen anybody use turn assist yet. I have so not seen a single. To use it. Okay, first of all, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, I don't know why, but for some reason, I'm more willing to, to put the Sequoia through hell and back. But when I get, if, if I buy a 200 series, okay, I'm not putting it through anything. I, I'm, I'm I, I mean, I could, sure. If I if I had a 200 <laughs> series, I'd be, I'd be. And good. that's and that's another a good thing about the Sequoia is it's like the the entry point is lower for purchase so like you don't feel as bad because like i don't feel bad beating up the sequoia but a 200 series if you like if i spend like he doesn't feel bad beating anything <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that the barrier entry to a sequoia is a lot easier and well, it's a lot easier on the wall than a 200 series, but it's a 200 I know. series. I still want a 200. I, I, I looked at I, I, I looked at that 200. Like I said, I, looked, I saw the 570, and I, I would say the Lexus 570s aren't they? Although I think the interior is more refined. Oh, absolutely. I feel like it misses the uh, the ball. Like the Land Cruiser, the 200 series, it. it the actual Toyota Land Cruiser itself has all the bells and whistles for the stuff you want. The zero point turning uh, button, it has all of that type of stuff. And and it also has the cool box. I really want the, I don't yeah, know the why. Cool box I is cool. The cool box, the cool box is cool. Yeah. No, no, they didn't no, get rid of it. The cool box is just not the on the, Yeah, seven. on the Heritage Edition, I don't know yeah. why. And the Heritage Edition doesn't have it, but my old Land Cruiser has it, which is yeah, fantastic. <laughs> So. Wait, does, does yours have the cool box in the center console? Back? Why do you have a fridge? Yeah. Uh, because it, the cool box only works while the truck is running. <laughs> this I feel is like also, you can wire this thing. Well, no, because it runs off the AC system. Uh. So it has. So you have an evaporator core in your dash, and that's what cools the. That's for your AC, and then it has a little evaporator without a. Okay, uh, okay. me understand. Me understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't have uh, what, what's it called? The, it doesn't have Norfolk's tube for the evaporator core and the and the center console, so it will freeze stuff. Like it will go below 32 degrees. So if you hit the ice function, it will uh, ice. Ice. Yeah, ice. Yeah, it will. It will, explode, <laughs> it will explode your Dr Pepper on your way to Gilmer. I, I will <laughs> contest to that. But a test. A test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's Leave it to the lawyer for the wordsmithing. <laughs> Leave it to the lawyer for the wordsmithing. So. But I guess I guess back to, to the point of the the 200 series versus the Sequoia. Like, yeah, I, don't get me wrong. I love a 200 series. Uh, they're freaking amazing, and you know they got a lot of flag for being like bloated and big, but they're extremely capable. You can take a 200 series down anything you want, but. On that same note, I think you can do the same with Sequoia. I mean, so far you've proven it. Uh, yeah, I mean, Between yeah. you, J-Lo, and Micah, y'all proven Sequoia's haven't failed. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, like, I, I love a 200 series, don't get me wrong. And one day I'd like to have a 200 series. But, like, if for my money, like, a 2015 Sequoia with 100,000 miles or a 2015 Land Cruiser with 100,000 miles, like, it's hard to beat a Sequoia. Well, I mean, I, I, I agree with you there. I mean, how many, I guarantee you, if you look at anybody who's watched this, they're thinking, how many people have thought about building a tundra? 
right? How many people have legitimately thought about wheeling? I have thought about wheeling a Tundra, right? Well, the problem with the Tundra is short bed. I just don't like the pickup truck. Well, well it's not it's not the pickup truck, but it's the it's the idea of having the five seven available to it, okay, right? Okay. The five seven, and and I think the Tundra. It, I mean, it's. I, but the the Tundra hits like the. I, I feel like the Tundra misses the mark. No, no, I, I agree with you. I agree yeah, with you. I think I agree with you. It, it, like it, it, it's a solid work truck. It's a solid like around town truck. It, it is a very solid truck. It's also got an extremely long wheelbase. That's the problem. And, I mean, and then that's where the Sequoia shines, right? Because it's the same issues you see with the Tacomas. The Tacomas, in comparison to the Forerunners, right? The Forerunners, what? Quite a bit less. I think the wheelbase on a Tacoma is like between 126 inches. Or like that. Well, I think the other benefit to the Sequoia is, uh, is it a full box frame? It's a full box frame, yeah. Uh, but back back to the Tundra versus the Sequoia, like I we we drive the shop the shop Tundra all the time. Parking is a pain in the butt. I don't know about you, but when I park the Sequoia, like I don't have to swing out to pull into a parking no. spot. Like, it's, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It drives very small. I will say yeah. that when I test drove one, it was really easy getting that parking spot front end. And huh. Yeah. Ba I mean, the Tundra was a back end. Backing in was basically your only option on anything that was in tight close quarters, right? Yeah. yeah. But anything in the Sequoia, I was just like, I was parking at the dealership and that wheel just kept turning and turning and turning. And I was like, oh, look, I fit. I, I, I will say this. The Sequoia is probably one of the most slept on Toyotas right now, at least the second generation. We knew the first generation was getting popular, but I think the second generation was very slept on. I'm gonna take a stab at Micah here. I know Micah was the first one to get this thing thrown, but I would like to say, and Alex will remember this, back in 2016, 17, I said, what if I got a Sequoia? And, <laughs> and oh, no, 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 of course he has to do it. Of course he has to do it, so it's, it's on record now. Yeah. And Alex told me, he goes, nobody's going to wheel a Sequoia. Don't get a Sequoia. Get a Forerunner, Andy. That's what you want. You want a Forerunner. Now I got a Forerunner. Get a Sequoia, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, your, I mean. Your Forerunner's pretty beast. I mean, and then it, hopefully soon enough we'll be doing more stupid things. Hey, so about the tie rods, okay? Those tie rods are beefy. Oh, yeah, they are. I will have beefy tie rods. You'll have the same tie rods I'll have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'll still have a V8 in more room. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, Video to, over. Wait, hold on. to go back to the whole 200 series thing, of course everybody wants a 200 series Land Cruiser. Yeah. Because like, they're amazing. And I looked at a 200 series Land Cruiser really hard. And then I went and drove a Sequoia. And you get the same engine, the same trans, big diff, big axles, big everything, but you get way more room. So it really lends itself to people who have families and want a wheel. Well, and that's the thing. So the reason why we now look at a Sequoia now is my wife and I talk because I'm doing more and more with a Forerunner that's probably going to be dumber and dumber if I want to drive it home. So knowing that, and even though I'm beefing everything up to match, I tow rig is nice, right? And the Sequoia, I still need a daily driver. So those guys that are looking for that family car, but also looking for something they can wheel and take their buggy out if they want to, I'm gonna tell you this much, I can't find anything that fits the Sequoia bill. The only thing that kind of scares me with the Sequoia is I'm gonna be getting 15 miles to the gallon, which is, I mean, well, it's a lot better than the Forerunner now, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I get like 18. I get like 18. Yeah, so you're also living in the 90s. I'm okay with it. Yeah, you have a zero to 60 of like minutes. Look at that much. <laughs> It's like the 1800s. <laughs> Look, I can, I, can, I can do 85 miles per hour with the wind on my back going downhill. Okay? Yeah, sometimes on the radio you're like, Alex, slow down! Yeah. Oh, 75 that, is too fast. In all fairness, we all yell, and when we're in a convoy with you, Alex, slow down. Nah. That, that's a good uh, point. All I know is when Alex and I convoy just him and I, we don't have a problem. Yeah, we, I do. I like to go seven. You have 33s he, on a he GX. He has to tell me to slow down because I'm on his ass. <laughs> You're on 33s on a GX. Like, you still have speed and acceleration yeah. and gas mileage to go with that. Yeah. <laughs> Try that with 35s. I, it works. Apparently like going to. <laughs> yes, you are. You got V8. So well, I mean, like, but also, you know, yeah, we, I, I think, V8. did you, I think you did some night wheeling. Did you do some night wheeling work? I did. And, and actually, that, that is probably the weak spot of the Sequoia. Well, I will say this that's why you because 
because and, and luckily so we got the tandem sliders on there with a kick out and my kick out got a workout I did not <laughs> that's not planned my kick out got a workout that's not planned but but like like Spider's Ravine when I did it at night I was paranoid as heck uh, about what I was going to hit because like everything was so tight when I did it during the day it felt like I had so much room uh, but on the Sequoia, the biggest weakness is definitely visibility. I can't see shit. Well, I mean, but I mean, I think wheeling at night, though, I mean, you've seen the setup that we run. So all of us, I think you're running. Are you running a light bar? Yeah, yeah. I got, so the, I got the Life Force 20-inch uh, yeah, combo. See, and I, I'm running the Life Force front, the, the dual pods, the Venom. Yeah. The yeah Venom, and I'm also running the... The, the rock lights on those. And I'll tell you this much, you need to get one of those because there's been multiple situations, even when the sun is setting and you're in trees, you can't see anything. Like, I'll say this much, a good set of bright rock lights will surpass any set of headlights you ever have because it doesn't blind your spot. Yeah. 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 And, and that, that's the thing, like, I think, you're on a light bar too? Yeah, you're on a life force. So, I mean, all of us run that stuff. So, I mean, everybody's heard of the other brands, the Rigids and the Bajas and things like that. But the Life Force is, I mean, for us, they come in, I guess for me, it comes in for comparable performance. I've beat, everybody knows, I've beat the crap out of my, my rock lights. And they still hold up. I mean, there's no, there's no haze, there's no scratching. Even, we just keep hosing them off and they just keep going. But, like, we, that, that provides, and, and I'll tell you, everybody this, like, Underbody lighting was like a fad for a while, and I understand the guys that don't do it, but for us in particular, I mean, I can tell you, there's not a single one of us in this group, right, that doesn't take our stuff and go wheel the piss out of it. Joey included! Yay! <laughs> Joey's been baptized in the <laughs> in the muds of Jambo, right? So, um, and, and, then, and then even Pablo, we give him crap. But that's because he has a pretty 80, and he doesn't like to replace things that are difficult to replace. And then the rest of us, that's we fair. have pretty trucks, it, we just don't care. But that's fair. I will say this. I do wheel my Tacoma pretty freaking hard. I have never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> you bashing in your quarter panel does not really <laughs> hard. Hey, that's hey, hey, hey. Never. What about this mechanical empathy? <laughs> My quarter panels are fine. Oh, oh hold on, not wait. on the GX. Oh, yeah, in all fairness, Alex did wreck the Tacoma one time. He came back with a Oh, yeah! Bumper. <laughs> that was one of my ARB bumpers like this. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's literally that, that like, kind of like a, yeah, a stroked out smile. I have to pull a tail. I have to pull a tail. I have to get up the hill. Yes, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I, 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 but, I mean, we, we seriously, like... There, there's a lot of shops out there, and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, they just don't find the time, and we get that. But we build the time, I guess, because we want to... Alex makes everything. He designs everything. And then it's pretty much Alex's, J-Lo's, and my job to break everything. And then at that point in time, we, we really don't do anything that we... I mean, I'll be honest with you. Every, like, one of the biggest things that always bugs me is people talk about HRAW sliders versus Dom Pugh sliders. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're like, you know, I guess theoretically I could build a set of chrome molly sliders if I really wanted to. Right, but I mean, it's a, it's a, it's what you need. And for as hard as he wheels and I wheel, and all of us wheel for that matter, um, I'll tell you this much: I, my sliders are still going strong. Uh, and it, and it's, I mean, we, I, I could, I think Alex taught me this saying when we first started wheeling. Eh, it's just a slider. That's that's just that's just your thing, yeah, right? That's what so, they're for. Yeah. But, I mean, but, but between that, the RCI skids that we run. Lights and everything like that. I think the Sequoia was just. I'm not gonna say it. I was gonna say it. Shut up. It, Shut up. It's, <laughs> it's not the answer to everything, but I will say it answers a lot. It gets really close. It yeah. gets pretty close. It, it, I personally would like to have a solid rear axle, but I, you know what? I see less and less advantages to the solid rear axle because. Whenever you lift the solid rear axle, especially with a panhard bar, you move it. The shift. It, it shifts. <laughs> and unless you compensate for the height, like you're gonna have some, uh, some like 
horizontal thrust left to right whenever you go, shut up. <laughs> you, whenever you jump and stuff, like, or if you hit a bump, like, with a pan hard bar, you're always going to have that motion where it goes like that. And the rear axle doesn't have that. Not only that, but with a stationary rear differential, like, that drive shaft doesn't move left to right or up and down or whatever. I mean, yeah, but if you, break, if you break a CV axle on the rear, you're not changing that out of the trail. But yeah. if you break a CV, if you break an axle in the rear, you're not changing that out of the trail either. You you're not changing it. Okay, show me your spare axle. <laughs> <laughs> it's out there. I'm on the trail. But, but in, all, in all seriousness, though, like the one thing that the Tundra does lend to, the, to, the, to answer the issue with having an IRS in the rear is, is that it's got that wider wheel, that width, that track yes. width. And because of that, your CVs don't take, and they're beefy as all hell. That's a beefy CV axle. Like, you're, you're going to have a hard time breaking it. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a tree trunk. It it, it 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 is it is a very solid. Now I want to get one just to piss Pablo off and prove him wrong. <laughs> like I said, I, I will I will be getting a family car soon, and it will. I'm not saying it will be. Well, something else we haven't mentioned about it is there is not a Forerunner or a Land Cruiser that's as comfortable to drive down the highway at 85, 90 miles an hour. I'll say it and I'll argue it all the way. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, <laughs> very I, I object. <laughs> you can object and be wrong. <laughs> My 80 is super comfortable. No. I do this and nothing happens. I've heard otherwise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've heard otherwise. I terrible. can't hold a lane to save my life, but I have a cool box. <laughs> That's true. Shirt. That's true. No, no, that, that is like the, the great thing about the Sequoia, especially in stock form. Oh, yeah, in stock can. form, like, I feel like the biggest jerk in the world because it's like 6,000 pounds and 380 horsepower and I'm going to, I'm just going to run you over. So. I mean, but it, it, it's, it's big. You got to admit, when you drive it, it yeah. feels. Yeah, no doubt. It just, I don't know what it is. Like, because when I drove it, I was twice as cautious about just, I, I understand your turn radius and everything like that. And I even, because I have the Baja fenders in the front of my truck, I'm not that much narrower than your Sequoia. But I will say this much, when I'm on, when I'm in the Sequoia, I just feel like it's just, it's fluffy all the way around. Well, it does, it, yeah, does, it, it does a really good job of pre uh, presenting a large interior. And that's that's where it gives you that perception. Because like, if you get in a 4Runner, and you gotta go it touch- It cramped. Not that oh, you feel cramped. But like, if you gotta touch the other door, for some weird reason, like in a 4Runner, you can, you can kind of lean over and do it. And as a Sequoia, you're gonna have to unbuckle your seatbelt, put your knees up on the seat, and then move your way over. Like it's because you're the tiny one. I have no problem with that in either truck. It's because you're taller than Zeus. I, I, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but that that comes back to like the great thing, and and that's one of the things that kind of bugs me when people are like, well, the 80 series is solid axle, so it's gotta be the greatest, the greatest 80 series. Like. I will trade solid axles and just a little bit of off-road ability for the amount of comfortability you get in a Sequoia. Because there's, like, yeah, I can follow you up some stupid Pablo stuff in a Sequoia. Pablo is literally having heartburn right now. I can follow you. I, can, I will follow you up some stupid stuff in a Sequoia. All right. So, but, like, on the way home, you're going to be crying. All right. I'm oh, no, 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 no. Listening to Angie. Hey, hear me out. Hear me out here. <laughs> sail away. Sail away. Going likely, right? Yes. Likely to Hidden Falls on June fifth. I think is what it is, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. At that point in time, I was just flagpole four o'clock. <laughs> right. And that's that's fine. Huh? I, I say Hidden Falls. We're gonna play a game of course. We're, we're we're gonna now that I got my eighty series all fixed. I think I think uh, it'd be a good time to put you in your place. Ooh. Oh! 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 move, Oh! 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 It just works. It's a 19. You don't <laughs> have to fix okay. anything. But if that's the card he wants to pull. <laughs> that's true. Oh, man. That's the one you're going to go with. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> it's old. <laughs> Wait, no, and, and hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. I'm going oh, to 
Yeah, let's go to Wait, your point. I'm gonna say this. Like people are like, well, the cool thing about an A series is you can feed 37s on A series. How much work do you have to do to fit 37s on A series? None. Well, not much. No, 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 no. Like, like technically, can't stuff 37s on his A series because he's not exactly. That's because he's he's on he's on a three inch lift. Yeah. Like, he's on a three inch lift. I'm on a five inch lift, and I can I can. In all fairness, technically, did not try to stuff 37s. Your pan hearts look like this. And yeah. you did pull your 37s off for 35s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like whenever you hit a bump, your your. When I get my up. when I get my turbo upgrade and I'm pushing 25 psi, this won't be a problem. Then you'll so be, Fury, you'll be going we're going to need is 37 empty twos. Yeah. Against his 37 empty twos, and I, we will see who wins. I will be able to do more than a Sequoia on 35s. Oh, challenge I don't extended. Have, I don't have to run 37s to be capable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to run. I, I don't have to. I don't have to run 35s to be drivable. Oh, <laughs> ouch. Well, I mean, look. It all depends on what you think about drivability, right? Uh, going the speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> How about maintaining? Yeah, just maintaining 70 miles an hour. Pablo is just trying, trying to. Be, I, I, just can, trying I can. To be I can hold clear. the speed limit now. I can hold the speed limit. Now. <laughs> No, the screen's on, it's fine. Okay. As long as there's like... So, red, okay. red. I mean, the, the, the one thing I will say is, is although we were... I, I, okay, so everybody knows I run Kings on my truck and wrap those, right? But that's very common for the forerunner, right? Yeah. You really only have your three to pick from unless you want to go to something like ONU, but then you feel like you're in a red wagon sometimes. Uh, and then I think you're running the JRZs right now. At the moment, yeah. And you're running whatever on it. Oh, yeah. I'm Is it easy. I'm oh. using a, a used OME kit that the previous owner bought off of Craigslist for 150 bucks. Okay, so he's got the budget JDM80. I don't know if that ever makes sense. Does that make sense? No, that we're, we're, we're changing out the suspension. So, like that, that's got to go. You guys are running the, the Elkas, and I'll, the it's it's my my only beef is is as big of a truck as this is, and mainly it didn't affect you as much, but him. Yeah, that's right, you. Those poor Elkas, the, for, for, for being... The, the, well, the rears. Yeah, the rears. I mean, you gave them a workout, and they still they still run great. The only thing I'll say is, is I mean, the Elkas, if they run that well on the two O's, I'm, I'm really, really curious what happens when you get two fives in the back. Yeah, and, you know, that's something that I've actually... And fatter springs. <laughs> that's is it two fives up front? Yeah. Yeah, so that's something I've been talking to Elka about, and, and the... I think the biggest deficiency that the Sequoia has at the moment, and j will probably agree with me, is nobody has come up with an excellent solution for the rear. Whereas like it, with the Forerunner or the GX or the 80 series, there's a bunch of excellent solutions for the front and the rear, the, regardless of what weight you want to run. But on the Sequoia, like we put, we put the uh, OME 2864s, I think, which is the heavy duty 80 series, spring which is about 320 pounds per inch which i think is just not strong enough considering that the front is about 700 pounds per inch but i'm i mean i'm so so i i, I obviously we're putting things up together last minute right but i mean on the rear there are heavier springs out there i mean it's just we can't get a hold of them right now yeah that's true everything's at a short because dobinson makes a really good spring for the rear of the Sequoia 701 v COVID C fifty nine seven nine makes things oh, difficult. Seven nine seven that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, whatever yeah, the part number. But is. once we get that, but I, I will say this much. I mean, I think that will relieve some of your issues. Yes, that, I think that will re relieve a bunch of my issues. And then the other thing that I noticed, and I and I told uh, Jayla this, is if I cycle the suspension, the shock seems to bottom out just a little bit before the. Bump stop engages, but these, the, I mean, but these were designed to be. I, I thought your rears were kind of just. Did we, we kind of shoehorn them in, right, to make them work? Shoehorn what? Like the, the the rear the rear shocks. Like there wasn't. There's no two five available right now. Period. Uh, well, King makes two five for the Sequoia. For the Sequoia, yeah. Oh. oh, that's right. They do, but I mean, also, I mean, the thing is, is like the. The Elkas, right now, they have the two O's. I think if they go to the two fives. Oh, it'd be perfect. Yeah, I mean, you, were you running Elkas before? No. Yeah, you were you running. Oh, well, he was running the Toy Tech Elkas. The Toy Tech yeah. Lumas. I mean, I, 
I think that's my big thing, and I will probably get one when that get kink, the little, get, the little kink gets worked out. And because uh, I don't mind a little Sequoia, I just don't want to go on 37s. Yeah. And 37s is a little bit like crazy. I will I'll admit to that because the 37s, while they do work, you got this recording, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Recording. Good. Good. Thirty sevens are crazy. <laughs> okay. Well, the thirty sevens do work. Uh, there's a little bit of rubbing in the rear, and I think that will be alleviated with the spacing of the bump stop, because I'm not engaging the bump stop at all. So if we space out the bump stop, maybe like an inch or so, I think that will help a lot. And then the other issue with the thirty sevens that I've had, and, and I think you've had as well, is rubbing of the reservoirs oh, yeah. and, and the sway bars. The sway bars, yeah. So, I mean, it's I, it's not a deal breaker for me, but mechanical it's, it's definitely, <laughs> I got mechanical empathy. Obviously, it's not a big deal for me. I have mechanical empathy. What? Well, it's not a big deal for me either. I mean, look at it. We know you don't have mechanical empathy. I do have He mechanical has empathy. mechanical empathy. He does. He builds race cars. Yeah. He just knows, he, he, he has mechanical empathy to race cars. No, he has the mechanical empathy to know when he's pushing it too. I That's pushed it a little bit. Empathy. Yeah, I mean, we, we pushed that boundary a little bit. No. But we were trying to test the Sequoias. Yeah, so man. Okay. It's good. It's good. Again, <laughs> if you get an opportunity, go to Barnwell, look up Sierra's Guide View, drive up to it, and then think, hey, a, a Sequoia, Sequoia made it. Up there. Yeah, we'll wait for it to pour down rain like mad, and then look at that. Oh, yeah, that, that definitely did not. And then have three buggies go in front of you. Yeah, like, it was a tall order, but he did it. But he did it. You got a little bit of damage. Trail right? whale. Yeah, nothing bad. No, I mean, you, you, I'll say this much. You wheeled smart. Any 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 person who's who's new to wheeling would have probably punched the brakes and roll. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Yeah, we, no, I, I, I'm sure you don't. And, and I'm, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure even if you survived that, your wife would kill you. Yeah, I would have been in trouble. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. No, but to be to be fair to his wife, when he did the rock garden and he kind of messed up his rear bumper a little bit. His, uh, Carla, his wife, said, he, he was telling her what happened. She said, well, did you finish? He said, yeah. And she said, good. Yeah. So she's cool. She's yeah. cool. Yeah. She's super cool. Shout out, Shout out to Carla. Shout out to Carla. Shout out to Carla. And my baby Jet. <laughs> and baby Jet. <laughs> yeah. So, see, I mean, well, I mean, but that's why Alex has got to build a rear bumper, right? Right. Exactly. And then it's coming. She it's did coming. say that. She said, I guess we're getting a steel bumper out back now. Yeah, yeah. Alex. Yes, I'm working on it. <laughs> you get in line, sir. Do what? Okay. You get in line. This okay. should be one of the first ones. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, all in all, I would say Jambo was, well, as always, we had a blast. No, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. I'll go back. I mean, we gave what? We gave away three sets of 612s there? Yeah, we gave away three sets of 612s, and uh, that's it. But... <laughs> Way to downplay it. <laughs> well, so, but, but we supply, also, but we I think, I think the cool it. thing was, the cool thing was going to the rock garden and showing up with the three sequoias. Yeah. Because there's a lot of rigs out there that are like, you know, lots of, like the, the mini, mini trucks and mini foreigners, like the first gen stuff, that it lends itself really well to wheeling. But the cool thing about the sequoias was no, there was nothing out there, out there like that. And we didn't see any 100 series do the rock garden. Yeah. We didn't see any 200 series do the rock garden. Saw an 80 series. Yeah. You almost did it. Yeah, you were not happy and about my it. My spotter was, you know. Oh, <laughs> shots fired again. Driver! Which driver? Well, <laughs> you have a JDM freaking 80 series. <laughs> I'm like at the ledge. I'm at the ledge of the rock garden and I hear driver. I'm like, that's not a good idea. He means the other driver. <laughs> yeah. That's your fault. Right. Yeah. I, I, this is a mer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I will say that that is confusing. I, I did direct uh, another. Uh, well, I think it was Brady when he had the Land Cruiser, your Land Cruiser, the right hand drive. I was like, driver. And he goes, wait, Which what? Driver? And I go, your other driver. <laughs> so, I mean, driver. stage driver. Stage left, stage right. But I mean, we, 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 we always have a blast there. I mean, this year I would say probably had more fun than usual. We got yes. to really hang out. I think well, I mean, to, to, to the credit of uh, the Jambo organization, uh, they, they limited 
that, or they just basically said vendors only need to be at their booths from five to eight. Yes. So that was really cool because from like the morning till about five, we could do whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on. For us, I, I can't. I mean, I, I'm sure all the other companies are as well. But like, we we know a couple. Uh, we we saw like for example Dougie out there. He's based out in Houston. I mean, he he goes to wheel. I mean, a lot of guys. I mean, I understand the, the vendor side of things, but like, let's not let's not forget. We wheel our trucks. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, I mean, but anything that I will tell you this much, I mean, you guys haven't steered me wrong. I mean, you steered me in multiple directions that have made me spend a lot of money, but you guys have never steered me wrong. And the whole thing is, is to this day, and I think Alex will test to this, I've blown one left, one back left quarter. So my, my camera can only record about 30 minutes at a time because digital camera things. That's uh, okay. So I kind of cut only off there, but we're. Uh, oh, no. It's okay. He just <laughs> tends to rant. Yeah. But uh, I will tear that mustache off your face. He's paid to talk. <laughs> but it, it's a mess. But he'll talk for free. <laughs> he likes to talk. Okay, fair. Man, I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. Big shout out to Alex because he's he's made up some really really cool designs yeah. for the Forerunner, the Sequoia. Uh, he's working on sliders for for second gen tacos now. They're done. They're done. Oh, they're, they're done. oh and they're bolt on too. Yeah. Yes. Um, so and that's they go the full length, right? Yeah, full length right. covers the bed. So I always tell people this: like, would you? Would a lot of guys will go out and just buy sliders and all that stuff and, and say, oh yeah, they bolt on, they look cool, yada yada yada, right? The one thing that I do like, and even though it takes Alex a little bit time, a lot of time to get something out again, but when it comes out, I'll say this much. It does its job. Like I, we've seen, we've seen now multiple tacos with, like for example, sliders that obviously made for the taco but are too short. And then what ends up happening is they end up the front rock, front or rear of the rocker panels uh, of uh, the forward of the of the rear tire and rocker panel, or the front in front of the uh, the, the front uh, right behind the front tire, they'll hit. And that, that's like one of the things. Like we we, I guess we just try to solve the issues that we've run into more or less, right? I mean, blown quarter panels are pretty common, right? So now the Forerunner, like that fifth gen bumper, I'll say this much, I mean, it was kind of a build up over a period of time, right? Yeah, definitely. And you know, like uh, lots of wheeling trips and- and <laughs> Trial and error. Trial and error. Trial, well, error trial and error and, and just, yeah. and, but, but the cool thing was like, only would say something that I thought would sound ridiculous. And uh, like he'd say, yeah, dude, I need like sliders, but for like my bumper for the back. <laughs> And I'm, like, and I'm like, that sounds stupid. And then all of a sudden, I was like, we go on this trail, and he's like, sure enough, like he bashes in his rear quarter panel, and like two other fifth gen foreigners do the same thing. I'm like, oh, god dang, he's right. <laughs> You're so, poor GX. Yeah, yeah. I don't hear it. Not JLO's GX. Well, yeah. it's just that rear, what the oh, band aid yeah. is. is yeah, the yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, but that's the thing. Like, I mean, we do, we don't mind wheeling the tight trails and the, and the ridiculous stuff. 18 no, trails. We're, I mean, we're yeah. not scared to get pinched. Well, I mean, not, you know, it's. It was what? Was it turkey truck? Yeah. We, we wheeled some stuff and then the ATVs, <laughs> the UTVs came by and stopped and looked at us like we were all insane. You got two Lexus and a. Going up this trail? Yeah, and, and, and I mean, you know, that was the one I bet the tire rod on, but I mean, even at the end of the day, I still drove home, you know? So the thing is, is like, we, I, I'll say this much. I mean, I give you a lot of crap, a lot of crap. But like that 5th and 4 runner bumper, there's a reason why it hasn't come off my truck. It's because, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've drugged that rear quarter panel on something. And the only reason I haven't had to buy at least 30 different taillights is <laughs> because, I've had something to bump it on. Hell, this last time on Sully Hill, I just basically drug it down the back left side because I slid into a rut. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. I mean, when you wheel in the rain, you don't get the technicality, the, you don't get the technical trails that you want. No, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's pretty much you go where you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, so I mean, like the kick out, I mean, I'll say this much. I mean, Alex, you, 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 you've also extended the sliders now a little bit if I remember correctly. Sorry? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, at least one more time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got it. I got it. But yeah, you know, but I mean, all, all the stuff that we make, I mean, it's it's not there to look pretty. I mean, it's I mean, it looks pretty, but it's there to get do its job. crap kicked out of it, and that's exactly what we do. Anybody who's ever taken a look at my passenger side slider knows that I put it through hell and back, and I can't tell you how many times I put new fresh coat. Oh, yeah. no, no. <laughs> and then I mean, but 
that, that's that's what I like about it, you know, and that's why I continue wheeling that stuff, and that's also the reason why I do the stupid things that I do because. Yeah, why for not? sure. Huh? Because why not? Because <laughs> yeah, <why not? laughs> you know, but, make Alex do it. Yeah. So <laughs> so real quick, um, do we have anything else we need to cover? I think I think we covered what was supposed to be a round table. I guess now a podcast, but <laughs> yeah, I think it was a lot of fun. Uh, I think you have a couple shout outs that you want to give out. Yeah, so uh, JLo was talking to Mr. Big Tree Syndicate. Yeah, Big Tree Syndicate. Big Tree Syndicate. They got these awesome, it's basically like a, 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 an Instagram slash uh, group of some sort that yeah. basically focuses around sequoias, which are the big trees. Yeah, first and second gen. First and second gen. So he, he sent us a bunch of cool stickers. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll get some. Some close ups of it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think these are super cool. Um, and then in addition to that, we also have the group that we own, uh, TSOR. So TSOR is on Facebook and on Instagram. And we like to post a lot of updates and stuff there. So if you want to know more stuff about Sequoias, definitely join TSOR and just stay up to date. And we'll try to kind of grow that as a community. Uh, obviously, it's a it's a spinoff. Well, not a spinoff, but kind of inspired by GXOR. So we're trying to grow it like that. But uh, yeah, stay tuned on that. And uh, I, I guess the only thing, other thing, we should really give thanks. I mean, good lord, I don't think we would be able to do half the things we did without everybody that helped yeah. tandem along the way. I mean, you know, it takes time to build the trucks, and I'll say this much: Alex and Bob, both, and Joey, and the three of you guys, and of course, Jelly you built your own trucks. So I can't say anything <laughs> about that, but. It, it, it takes an immense amount of time to do things, to test things, particularly if you're on the forefront of stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that, that there's a lot of hard work, so, I mean, but I, we also want to make sure, you know, everybody out there, I mean, you see the stickers on the side of the truck. I mean, uh, Auburn Gear, working with Alex, getting everything kind of situated. I mean, that locker's been phenomenal for us. Um, the uh, Life Force guys have, have never ceased to be shy about helping us. Yeah, their lights are phenomenal. I, I got to tell you, they really, really are. They, they are amazing. I mean, considering the stupid stuff we run them into and drag them through, there's there's no reason why they should be working. Uh, and they still do. And uh, uh, Elka, they they pulled through for us trying to find, I mean, trying to find shocks first of all was a pain in the butt. But I think Elka and then through Crave. Crave, yeah. yeah. Crave, over our buddies in Canada. Yeah. They, 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 they came through us in a pinch and they performed flawlessly and we love them. You know, and then of course RCI got us skids, uh, and then I mean, uh, Fury got us there because we now have shoes, right? Yeah, Fury <laughs> they, they got us there and out of some stupid things. Yeah, definitely. And Big shout to, out to Fury. Thanks to AL at AL Off Road. Yeah. yeah. Jonathan had somewhere to sleep. Yeah, no doubt. That was a requirement, yeah. and I was hassling Scott well before that. Every <laughs> <laughs> I was reaching out to everybody who made racks, saying, "Hey, I want one for a second sense of clue. What do you have?" And they all laughed at me. But old Scott at AL said. Gotcha. Yeah, he pulled through last minute. Actually, he came he here, if I remember correctly, yeah. yeah. and delivered the racks and even installed it for Alex. Yes. yes. So, so, I mean, it's, uh, it, like, yeah, man, Jembo would not be uh, nearly as doable without you guys yeah. to, to help. And, and like I said, if you guys have any questions, I mean, I think each of us have wheeled the piss out of the majority of the products. I'm, I'm super impressed. So. It's okay. Yeah. All right. Just does the mustache have anything else to say? Yeah. Well, I challenge that mustache. You challenge that mustache? <laughs> he does yeah, yeah he does have a good challenge. <laughs> he has a very good challenge, Matt Damon. I can't, but, I can't. <laughs> no, I, I will admit the squares are pretty cool. They're, they're, I, I'm going to get one for my wife. But that, that's the it. That, that. That's the it. That is it that's for this it. video. Uh, if you liked, this style of content, uh, let us know, write, write, write your guys' thoughts down below. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, other than that, thank you guys so much for coming to the round table and thank you guys for sticking around and watching this whole thing through. So, uh, I think that's it. Food! 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 Food. Food. Good night, yeah.